Hello everyone, in this new video series, I'm gonna recommend cool tech gadgets that I find really useful and that's why I decided to bring it to the channel. I bought all of the items that I'm showing in this video with my own money. And if in the future I decide to show any products that I received for free, I'll make sure to let you know. The first item of my list is this portable soldering iron. As you may know, I have shown many mods here in the channel that require soldering. So this small portable soldering iron is small, safe and easy to use. And looking at the main module, it kinda looks like a vape pen, right? It's because it is exactly that. This is a modified vaporizer module. It has a rechargeable battery. And even if I push the button, you can see it is no atomizer message. It charges through a micro USB port, unfortunately. And in the bottom, you have buttons to set how many watts you want to output. And by changing this, you can regulate the temperature of the tip. The tip is attached to the atomizer port. And when you push the button, it'll start heating for 10 seconds. After that, the heating will stop and you must push the button again to keep heating the pan. This is made to save battery life. To turn it off, you must press the button 5 times repeatedly. And to turn on, you must press 5 times again. This is a nice safety measure. This way, the iron won't turn on accidentally in your bag or toolbox. You receive the kit inside a carrying case. Inside you have the heating module, the default tip, some solder, these two other models of tips, and a small charging cable and a manual. The iron heats up very quickly making it perfect to quickly solder a wire or reflow a cold solder joint. If the solder you're trying to melt is really old, or if it's lead-free solder, it might be a bit more difficult. But it does get the job done too. The module can supposedly hit up to 75 watts. I doubt that this is true. I believe that it reaches around 30 watts max. And interestingly, you can see the voltage it outputs here. This iron will cost you around $23 without shipping and you can choose between four different colors. Next item is this desoldering pump. Actually, desoldering stuff can be harder than soldering it. And I'm sure that you have seen those expensive Hakko desoldering guns. It is a great tool, I have no doubts about it. But the price? Not for my budget. Then you have these cheap manual pumps. They are a pain to use, you must heat the solder and then put the tip of the pen really quick and push the button to use and you must do it multiple times, it is not good. The desoldering gun, on the other hand, it melts the solder and sucks it up at the same time. You just have to position the tip and push a button. It saves you a lot of time, especially when handling solder switches on keyboards. That's where this desoldering pump comes in. It is automatic and it has a removable tip. On top of that, you get a tool for cleaning the nozzle and three extra tips of different sizes. When the pump is dirty, you can open it up and clean the excess solder. And the pump sucks a decent amount of air. You can see it here. When you push the button, it sucks the solder in, and when you release it, it spits out. 
but when I bought this one, I forgot to check the operating voltage, which is 220 for this blue model. So what did I do? Bought another one. The black model is slightly smaller than the blue one, but it works at 110 volts and it costed around $26 without shipping. And it works wonders. Just like a desoldering gun, it desolders quickly and easily. And without the need to do it multiple times too. And just like that, you desoldered the component. For me, this desoldering pump was a game changer. It is just perfect for removing components with multiple soldering points like this, or even analog stick modules which are also hard to remove. The next item is a simple LED desk lamp. Costing $18, it is much more useful as it seems. First, the lamp is totally flexible. Next. You have three color modes for the lights, cool, warm, and neutral. The buttons are touch sensitive and you can also dim the lights by holding the button down. It has these night lights to help you see where the lamp is when your room is dark. It has a rainbow effect but you can lock to a specific color by holding the button down. It has a USB port which you can use to charge your phone or a power bank or power any other USB device. It has a rechargeable battery inside and you can recharge it by using the micro USB port on the back. It has a slot for inserting pencils or in my case screwdrivers. And you can put the screws here or any other objects you might want. It's very useful when you are soldering things because you can position the lamp really close to the object. It also have a smartphone stand in case you are watching a tutorial or a video. And that's not all. Finally, it comes with a USB fan. I won't lie, it's quite a loud fan. But again, when I'm soldering stuff, I don't want to breathe in these fumes. So the fan helps a lot with that. Next item is the Re i4 keyboard. It costed $18, but VK, why are you showing this? Everyone know these USB keyboards, they're everywhere. They have a dongle on the back, you take it out, plug it in and use it on whatever you want. And they have RGB lights even on the cheapest model, so I don't see an advantage. Well, the Re i4 has a dongle too. It has a scroll wheel with a middle click and shortcut for the mouse buttons on the top, which in my opinion makes it more comfortable to use. It also has a backlight, although it's just a white light. But the main difference that made me bought this one, it's because it has Bluetooth connectivity besides the dongle. I like to use my phone in the docked mode a lot. And when connected with a cable, you don't have a slot for a dongle. Unless you are using a hub with multiple ports. So with this keyboard, you can operate your phone at a distance without having to worry about a dongle. It works very well and when using together with a Bluetooth controller, you have a quick setup to enjoy emulators or Microsoft's cloud gaming service. And in case you don't like typing on a tiny keyboard like this, you have another option. This is a keyboard with a touchpad that's not very portable but it is ultra thin.
it's compatible with Android, Windows, and iOS, and you can pair with three different devices and switch between them whenever you want. It has a touchpad that is clickable, and impressively, it has RGB lights, with a rainbow effect too. Of course, if you don't like it, you can choose plain colors. And this keyboard is much more comfortable to type on. The only downside that I found is that the F keys are actually function keys. So if you want to refresh a page, for example, and press F5, it won't work because the default option is cut. So to use the F keys, you must hold the function button. So to do Alt F4, you must press Function, Alt and F4. And that's a bit lame in my opinion. The keyboard has an internal battery and is rechargeable with a USB Type-C port. It costs $24 with free shipping. And in case you don't like the touchpad, it comes bundled with a mouse. The mouse has a dongle and Bluetooth connectivity too. It has very subtle RGB lights, and the buttons have silent switches. I recently did a video on how to make any mouse silent, and I'm surprised to see it by default on a mouse. The mouse is rechargeable with a micro USB port, which is very weird because the keyboard is Type-C. Go figure. And that's it. That's all the recommended tech for today. I'll leave the links to all products in the description of this video, and I look forward to your comment. Did you like these products? Do you want to see more videos like this? I read all comments, and I often leave a heart to let people know that I'm reading them. Also, don't forget to leave your like and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.